let's just go ahead and finish this since it's the end. You jump onto Slim Shady's back and ride like the wind, following the railroad tracks back into the desert. When you finally catch up, you stand up on Slim Shady's saddle and leap in onto the back of the train like a real badass, just barely catching the edge of the roof and pulling yourself up. Here's hoping you don't have to do it again. Your stuntman- We didn't meet any cactus people! Uh, could have been killed. Looks like Gary decided not to join you on account of not having a stuntman, so you're on your own until you get back to Frisco. Woo! You've kicked this whole Norton problem down the road a ways. I mean, down the train a ways. I mean, he, he ran further down the roof of the train. Hooray! Shut. Oh, there's light here. We're good. Ah, uh, birds 2.0. I did meet someone who really loves cactus. Break. It's too late. We'll do another um, episode probably after this, but I I just wanted to do this because it's good timing. still have to also do the, um, the hidden the key to the forward passenger car in my luggage to make it easier for me to murder everyone in the sleeper car. Sincerely, the train murderer. He has come to the group of the sleeper car in the next 55 minutes if you want a murdering. I don't want to read all that. Circus. Pass your car key. Unlock it. You finally make it past your car. One car back from the locomotive, which may be confusing if you thought locomotive meant the entire train. So I could just say the engine, except that also refers to the engine itself, that is, the actual steam engine that makes the train go, when not just the most car of the train. Anyway, you're in the passenger car. Suddenly, Norton clambers in the window! He must have dramatically clung to the side of the train in order to reveal at the last minute that he hadn't actually been defeated. Dang it! He runs into the, uh, well, the frontmost car of the train and locks the door. What a jerk! Maybe he can get some of the passengers to break down the door and arrest him, or... Just kick down the door and shoot him until he can't bother anybody anymore. Up to you. I'm not gonna bother them. In front Norton! Just me, you crazy old bastard. That's right. That's one way to deal with an antagonistic bureaucrat. Not strictly speaking, or a legal or a moral way, but. It's hard to argue with success, especially when you're dealing with a crazy old bastard who poisoned your eyes and kidnapped the entire train. Hooray. You did it. Thanks, boss. No problem. We got the track laid right after the station of the first ever cross-territory railroad, thanks to the Manifest Destiny Railroad Company, and principally you. You did a real good job, Katarina Foss. Ah, oh, shucks, don't mention it. I am sure that they are interesting. Looks like somebody on that train got a job as the projectionist, which I have to watch this movie. Show me the final cutscene! Some folks' ends don't matter. 
Both the folks, they like to know how things turn out. The consequences of their action, like. With the trains running again, Frisco thrived. People came from all over to seek their fortunes. But thanks to you, they didn't have to do it while on fire because some cow attacked their wagon. With the railroad company and Norton ousted, Smee found himself out of a job, but in an opportunity. After being elected mayor, he managed the growth and infrastructure of Frisco with compassion and pragmatism. In 1944, Frisco was made, named most reasonable city by Tuesday Evening Post. After he got settled in, Gary climbed on top of the tallest building in Frisco and shot spores every which way. They say his descent still roam the west to this day. After she finished getting the Baker Boys up and running, Louise moved to Frisco and opened her own shop specializing in artisanal breads and pies. Unfortunately, after some unknown vandal kept breaking in at night and destroying all the pies, she had to switch to a breads-only business model. Kurt left the fort and set up shop in Frisco. His cool <coughs> fitness group skyrocketed in popularity. The growth was entirely due to word of mouth because the first rule of Kurt Fitz is Kurt's fit is that you cannot stop talking about Kurt's fit. Oh, Kurt's fit, CrossFit. I get it now. You solved all the Breadwood's problems. With the increase in morale and civic resource, they were able to clear the weeds from the road and fix the well and the broken kitchen post. There was even enough left over to give the mayor's office a new coat of paint, refresh the facade on the buttery biscuit, and add a second story to the bunkhouse. They even managed to get that horse in the dream hub. Chuck continued to run his blood and breakfast without incident, accident, scandal, allegation for many years. Thanks, you for friend. But keep a weather eye open, mates, and hold on tight with both hands if you please. With your help, Boy Bean's Jelly Bean Museum became the talk of the town. Well, first they had to build the town nearby, but once they did, who we? You were remembered as a local hero in Dirtwater. Thanks to your efforts, it became twice the town it was before you got there. They even put a statue of you up on Main Street. It washed away the first time it rained, because they made it out of salt, but still, it's a thought that counts, right? And... As for you, after your adventure, you settled in Frisco and bought a very long, very narrow house. You filled it with souvenirs to your exploits and started an antique hat track collection. When you left home, you told Rufus you wanted to seek fortune. Unfortunately, you ended your adventure nearly penniless. Oh well, maybe you can find, maybe Rufus can find somebody else to look up to. Well then. In 1906, all of the remaining cows in the west were simultaneously activated by some kind of signal from hell. They thundered east, forming a gigantic single-minded herd, led by the infernal Satan's Duke Bavicus, the cow army, thundered east toward dirt water. I'm guessing this is what I missed. Fortunately, a gang of rodeo clans swept in at the last minute and slaughtered the herd just before it reached dirt water. Unfortunately, all of the townsfolk of dirt water had a hard time sleeping for pretty much the rest of their lives. Seriously, it was a grisly night. 420 years later, deep beneath the ground, ancient machines silently stopped doing the thing they were built to do. It's probably fine, you and everybody you know are dead by then, and most of humanity has gone has moved to space. Still though, it's a shame about the planet. There's some cool ba bars there. I was about to say bears. Make their flame. 